gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Arvind Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Satya Prakash Mishra. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Satya Prakash. Thank you and a very good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by wishing all of you a very happy new year 2024 and a great year ahead. Thank you for taking your time out again for participating in this call to discuss the third quarter results of Arvind Limited for the financial year 2324. Joining me today is Mr. Puneet Lalbhai, Vice Chairman and Executive Director, Mr. Jay Shah, Executive Director and Group CFO, Mr. Nigam Shah, the Chief Financial Officer of Arvind Limited. Most of you may be aware that the retail sales across the world continue to remain muted. However, the demand for our products has begun <coughs> showing improvements. The brands and retailers have completed restocking the inventory in the recent past. On the input cost side, cotton and input prices continue to be range-bound and towards the lower end of the spectrum. Looking forward, prices of crude oil and derived products will be an important space to watch out for. More crucially, we'll be closely monitoring the development in the Red Sea area as a significant part of our exports go through Suez Canal. And disruption there I have already driving the container prices and shipping times up. Before I come to the financial performance for the quarter, I would like to share a few noteworthy milestones that were achieved in the quarter gone by. I'm happy to inform you that as part of latest SNP DJSI Global Sustainability Assessment Ranking, Arvind Limited was placed number one among Indian companies and number seven globally, which was improved by four places from previous year. This is a testimony of our long-standing commitment towards environmental sustainability and a continuous endeavor to be a social responsible corporate citizen. Towards this, I'm also pleased to share that a new initiative was launched called Global Water Innovation Center for Action, as we call it internally, GVCA, which was inaugurated in our fancy campus, Ahmedabad. This is co-founded along with our, uh, one of our key customers, Gap Incorporation. This will provide an open source platform that brings together expertise and audience through showcasing physical models, simulations, demonstrations, seminars and events, and hosting technology visits. Coming on to the business front, we signed an MOU with Indian Navy recently to supply advanced uniforms. The MOU is an important step towards scaling up supplies of high quality and innovative products to our armed forces. We expect the current run rate of 100 crores to expand multifold in the years to come. Defense business is poised to grow to become more than 15% of human protection by the year 2025. Coming to our third quarter results, Quarter 3 FY24 revenue stood at 1,888 crores. This was 5% lower than Quarter 3 FY23 and 2% lower than on a sequential basis. This is despite a healthy, healthy volume growth uh, during the period, especially in our advanced material section. EBITDA during the period grew by 16% and stood at 216 crores, which translates into an overall EBITDA margin of 11.4%. The EBITDA margin during the period improved by 200 basis points on a year-on-year -year comparison. Profit after tax during the quarter grew by 22% on a year-on-year -year basis to reach 92 crores. Overall textile volume was similar to last quarter, though denim volume saw seasonal uh, uh, decline and uh, clocked about 10.3 million meters. This was more than offset by a strong growth in woven section which sold about 32.9 million meters during the quarter. Fully formed garments during the quarter was about 7.7 .7 million pieces. Overall textile revenue stood at 1,426 crores, which was 2% lower than quarter two and 8% lower than quarter three of the previous year. Textile margins inched closer to 12% mark as we have earlier suggested and stood close to 11.8% in the current quarter. EBITDA margin improved by 140 basis points compared to the same quarter last year. Advanced material division continued its growth trajectory and delivered a volume growth of 20% plus during the quarter. Although the revenue growth was limited to 2% on account of a sharp price deflation in the raw material prices, particularly in industrial section. 
revenue for this segment on an overall basis for advanced material stood at 345 crores during the quarter. EBITDA uh, for the same period was 52 crores, translating into an EBITDA margin of 15.2%, which is aided by softer input costs and operating leverage. EBITDA margin during the same period improved by 150 basis points on a year-on-year -year comparison. Based on our current order book and momentum in our inquiry pipeline, we are confident that quarter four of FY24 performance to show further improvement and help deliver a very strong second half of FY24, as we have already guided, guided in earlier calls. Overall, net debt stood up at uh, 1390 crores as at the end of the current quarter. A small increase is on account of higher working capital usage during the quarter gone by. We expect to exit the financial year with a long-term debt of close to 400 crores. This concludes my opening remarks. Before we open the line for questions, I request Mr. Puneet Lalbhai to share his perspective on the market, relevant business environment, and our performance during the quarter. Over to you, Puneet. Bhai. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to interact with all of you today. <clears throat> I think Satya has both um, about the environment spoken eloquently and deeply about the environment and the results. So I think um, I will sort of give my flavor to things in the questions. So let's let's uh, use the remaining time we have for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prerna Junjunwala from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity um, and congratulations on a strong set of numbers. Uh, I had a few questions. Uh, first, this textile margin improvement that has come at 11.8% uh, uh, overall, could you help us understand how the margins are moving in the fabrics and the garments uh, business and how sustainable they are uh, going forward uh, from a long-term perspective? Thank you. <clears throat> I think um, there has been an improvement uh, in margin due to efficiency mostly. As you know that our revenue number has been, you know, uh, lower than last quarter, uh, last, last quarter, quarter three of last financial year. Um, and that is mostly on account of most of the uh, revenue deflation being passed on. Um, so I think the team has done a great effort in, in, in sort of expanding the margins and we expect uh, if all else remains equal in terms of you know, no major disruptions in the world and, and demand, um, uh, we foresee that we should be able to retain uh, most of these, these gains. Okay, uh, just for follow up on this, uh, how much of this could be contributed to uh, the raw material deflation uh, uh, benefiting the fabric business? And uh, so I just mentioned that most of it is on account of efficiency improvement, um, uh, better customer mix, uh, so all factors that are not very transient in nature. Uh, the raw material deflation may have, of course, a, a slightly promoting effect, but as, as in, our, in our industry, which is very competitive, most of these gains are difficult to maintain over a long period of time. So most of that gets passed on almost immediately. Okay. And in the garmenting business, uh, how is the margins moving? So very similar uh, sort of scenario playing out in both places. Um, I think the journey in garments is, is evolving as, as we speak. Uh, we are improving on operating parameters. Uh, some of the uh, first factories where where we have uh, started the improvements are showing very positive signs of efficiency improvement, etc. So 
the direction directionality is positive and along expected and previously guided lines okay uh, and uh, so my second question is on uh, capex how much of the capex have been concluded till 9 month uh, and uh, uh, for uh, full year likely to be done and what can be the capacity increases if at all it is happening in this year and next year so definitely we will have some capacity increase on the garment side next year um and we have uh, initiated uh, some uh, capex i mean we would have completed around 200 crores uh, uh, by q3 and another um, 50 crores or should get completed in the in the final quarter so we should you know uh, of the 600 that are planned across two years we should be crossing or coming very close to 250 260 as we enter the next year okay thank you and i'll come back to the question to you all the thank you thank you the next question is from the line of surya narayan from sunidhi securities please go ahead yeah am i audible sir may i request you to use your handset sir please okay thank okay. you yeah so uh, so couple of questions so one is that uh, you know uh, the new initiative uh, what we you know we have seen uh, from your side that you now you have been uh, some moe with the go- gujarat government over around 3000 crore so can you can you just like broadly uh, you know uh, detail uh, which are the areas we will be focusing on because this uh, this investment was not uh, uh, you know planned here yeah there is fast question hello ah uh, yes yeah. this is the group level kind of uh, investment not all of this is going to happen uh, through through arvind limited um, there are other group companies um, that will also be doing uh, 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 you know investments and this is for a much longer time horizon as well so um, whereas we have planned the 600 crores over 2 years in in great detail um there are additional plans that that we will as they firm up uh, we will be declaring even in arvind limited but as of now i think we should uh, stick to the uh, 600 crores over 2 years and then maybe another 400 crores as we move move forward but those 400 are still under evaluation and uh, um sort of uh, wetting and we have intention to invest more but uh, those have not yet been finalized so it would not be uh, correct to to include them in the next two years kind of uh, time horizon secondly sir uh, in the garmenting division uh you now it was expected that you no know, in the second half uh, sometimes uh, we could be uh, generating uh, you know volumes but that is uh, that has not uh, come yet yet so when when can we expect uh, uh, the revenues uh, to improve significantly um so the volume increase has i mean there is a marginal volume increase in in q3 but q4 we should see a, a better volume increase going forward and as we had guided earlier we should be reaching 85% kind of of our capacity by the year end so uh, and going into quarter 1 maybe even higher so we are seeing good uh, uh, order pipeline um, uh, going forward so while uh, we also missed some of the garmenting uh, turnover this quarter because of uh, a few missed containers in red sea not very high numbers but it, the number could have been slightly better had uh, this this issue not occurred so uh, you have mentioned in the uh, your presentation that uh, you have very good order book uh, at the equation so can you quantify the order book uh? so i think we should look we should see the improvements in almost all segments in q4 over q3 um, so generally the our guidance has been each subsequent quarter we should see a slightly improving trend which is the way we are going quarter 4 could be slightly better than quarter 3 on all volume parameters in the amd space sir uh, there is some slowdown in the uh, industrial segment although uh, uh, other segments are doing well 
so uh, when when can we expect uh, the investor segments to pick up uh, even as uh, we are getting good orders from the uh, you know defense space so if you can uh, quantify some uh, data or some order demands from the defense side uh, because you know recently we have done that so that will be uh, one of protection i believe protection area so protection clothing so what kind of order book uh, we can expect from the defense uh, so in the future it can be very large right now it is about uh, 10 to 15% of our overall human protection uh, business but uh, you know we feel that this is a with make in india and indigenization drive uh, we feel that uh, this area can be you know very significant in terms of our revenue um, it would be a little premature to guide exactly what number by when but i think based on all the Uh, sort of uh, product development and MOUs that we have signed, and a few orders that we have already received, we can we can very confidently say that we are on the right path here. Um, I think, uh, as far as industrial fabrics is concerned, happy to state that quarter four is looking, you know, relatively better than than this quarter, which was sort of uh, expected to be low. um on industrial but demand has started picking up in in quarter four so the 20% cgr uh, that has been guided uh, that will be maintained uh, on a sustainable basis going ahead as so well volume based on volume basis we are already at 20% cgr if you look at the overall amd uh, put together and we should maintain our profit in q4 as well okay sir. thank you thank you Our next question is on the line of Vikas Jain from Equiris. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Sir Sanjay, for the opportunity. Sorry to interrupt. First question, sir. May I request you to use your handset, please, sir? Your audio, audio is not clear, sir. Uh, yes. Is it better now? Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sir, the question is respect to our denim, uh, denim side performance. So uh, while the volumes were on the neutral side. according to is has been the uh, um, as in the reason for the underperformance is it like the domestic side uh, not doing well or the exports also not doing well what has led to a sharp dip on a quarter on quarter basis so there is a huge seasonality in denim so quarter 3 is generally very weak in denim because um, when we are in quarter 3 um, you know the uh, season uh, the the buying buying there's a lull in the buying for for 3 4 months because denim is generally a heavy product so the summer uh, uh, the, the quarter 3 is a very good time for summer clothing uh, so spring summer clothing is bought during quarter 3 so every quarter 3 if you look at the pattern of denim you will you will find three strong quarters and quarter 3 always weak so that, that trend is playing out but if you will look at the overall average we will you will see an increasing trend uh, and quarter 4 we have a reasonably strong order book so um, even denim is moving around expected lines okay from hello so we are unable to hear you i request you to unmute the line sir Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected while we reconnect the management. <laughs> Mr. Vikas Jain, may I request you to self-mute your line? Thank you. Yes, uh, I I think our call got dropped. Apologies for that. 
I don't know whether the uh, how much you heard. I think but Nick, you were in a denim quarter four. Yes. Uh, so we were talking about quarter denim quarter four. Um, the denim quarter three is was down because uh, on expected lines because quarter three in denim is a low season. So if you study the historical pattern of denim, you always quarter three is the lowest quarter in the year. Um, and uh, quarter four, we have a healthy order book. So um, I wouldn't say uh, the denim numbers here were either a surprise or of great concern. We should do. Um, we should see a good recovery in denim in quarter four. Got it, sir. The second question is with respect to the uh, uh, realizations across the segment. So, as far as your estimate, uh, where are we in the in the progress or in the cycle where the realizations are about to bottom out? What do you believe uh, is, uh, is is expected in the upcoming days of the order book? How do you see so the realizations standing out? Biggest raw material, our biggest raw material, which is which is cotton and yarn, uh, cotton yarn. Um, I think that now has reached uh, quite a, quite a bottom because the cotton prices are at minimum support price already now um, and cci has already started buying cotton which is which is an organization that will support farmers when prices uh, go to minimum support price so uh, fall below this is very unlikely it can happen but it is it is very unlikely also uh, ice has gone up slightly so currently indian cotton is in export parity so even that should should keep up the prices at this level uh, going forward so i don't see huge um, uh, reduction in 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 raw material prices going forward uh, especially since cotton seems to be bottoming out of course other commodities can behave um, uh, differently based on geopolitics based on oil price and one will have to keep looking out for that but as of now it's looking like that the realization should have bottomed out sure sure so with respect to wovens as a segment so uh, we're not uh, incurring any capex there what uh, as per you is the is a uh, maximum uh, in terms of wovens that we can do here either facility or with the partition so it's not as if we are not incurring any capex there i think in the fabrics piece overall we continuously invest in innovation so while the absolute volume doesn't go up what happens is margin in, uh, unlock what happens is uh, more strategic alignment with customers efficiency improvement so for all of that we continuously add new technology um uh, we we try and make our supply chain faster and more responsive so all those investments are constantly happening if you if you completely withdraw from investment from any category then over a period of time you your relevance goes down so you have to keep investing some amounts there um uh, to to remain relevant which we are doing we are constantly adding newer technologies newer finishes um uh, and better uh, customer centric models Uh, so that investment is on, and uh, that continues in wovens as well. Understood. Understood. Sir. All right, sir. Thank you so much. I'll join back with you. Operator. Operator, can we have Sagar the next Parikh, question? Your line, yes, sir. Our next question is from the line of Sagar Parikh. Mr. Sagar Parikh, please go ahead with the question. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, congrats on a uh, good set of numbers. Uh, so, firstly, on this uh, Red Sea Canal disruption, uh, wanted to check what is the exact uh, or broadly also if you can give us some kind of impact on the numbers for Q3. About 20, 25 crores of revenue, perhaps you know, spilled over into Q4. Because uh, I was under the impression that most of the exports happen on the FOB basis, so then that impact. That's why it's such a small number. Okay. okay Because but... we still have some DDT shipments, so our, our garmenting is uh, not, uh, uh, some of it is 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 DDT. 
some of our advanced material business particularly is ddp okay fair but this uh, problem seems to continue even for q4 right yeah so there will be a readjustment in terms of the expected delivery so when the problem first happens the maximum disruption happens and then the world adjusts to you know the new timeline mm -hmm. so uh, so i i don't see this happening every quarter i think then then that becomes part of your planning cycle understood and on the second question on the advanced material you mentioned that defense is about 10 15% of human protection revenues currently i'm assuming that would be largely all domestic driven right uh, for our uh, domestic uh, so do, armed force we do some export defense business as well so we supply um, uh, some uniforms to to friendly countries uh, in the in the middle east etc um, okay uh, but uh, but most of the technical technical uniforms um, uh, we reserve them for we reserve the high technology stuff for generally the indian army understood and, so then and other indian armed forces including navy air force understood so this 200 so we have a quarterly run rate of about 200 crores from human protection broadly 190 200 crores 15% of that is approximately 25 30 crores on a quarterly basis and that you are saying with this mou recent mou that we signed with indian navy that should significantly scale up going forward that and other other uh, sort of uh, uh, you know efforts in the pipeline should on a medium term level so india defense business can is is never a, a sort of um, uh, even sort of business it's a patchy business because when the tenders come out that's when you know you get spikes and then you have lull periods so it's important to look at the defense business over multiple quarters multiple years but the directionality of 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 that business um will be up understood and i think in such uh, opening remarks satya mentioned this 100 crore run rate uh, uh, was that for advanced material division revenue run rate for the f like 100 crores per month is was was he referring to that yes yes that that was the reference okay so 100 crores you said would significantly scale up is what i heard uh, yes, correct me that, no. that is our estimation going forward so that would be a function of this indian navy order or anything else also this includes that yes no so generally i mean if you look at the overall amd our our attempt is to grow this business 20% plus year yeah. on year yeah which is how you should think about it i think that's the yeah way but 20% on the volume side would not probably read to 20% on the uh, revenue side because of the deflationary on a, on a medium term it should i mean all these things will i mean you may have quarters where you have a raw material depression you'll have quarters where it will go up again so so broadly you know that would be the effort that both volume and and revenue should should over a period of time sort of converge to to the actual growth rate okay fair and my last question would be on the debt side so we are at about 1390 where would we like to see our debt by the end of the year you mentioned 400 crores of long term debt but over a over i mean for the full year at net debt level where would we be And so I, I I think we are very now comfortable with debt. So you know our endeavor is to now sort of focus on growth. Um, we want as little long term debt as possible because there is a there is a repayment uh, liability generally there. And um, working capital debt is a function of uh, how your business is increasing. So uh, you know it's generally backed by receivables or or inventory that that is current. So. so there we 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 don't want to artificially put any restrictions on how we do business uh, so we don't want debt to now start uh, becoming um, you know uh, an impediment to to growth um, yeah. i think we are in a very comfortable position and um, what we will focus on is having very good capital efficiency so i think you know over the last couple of years in fact this is an area we've done well we've uh, improved the turns of the overall business significantly and we should we will endeavor to keep the turns uh, at a high level um uh, which will and which will oscillate a little bit around uh, depending on how we see raw material and how much we want to cover uh, for strategic reasons so you know a few quarters it may be higher or lower depending on those strategic decisions but we would like to maintain a very good efficiency and hygiene on 
on capital efficiency. Or understood. But Q4 broadly, capex is 50 crores. Your EBITDA, I'm assuming, would be higher than Q3 because uh, of the strong outlook given. So then, your technically your debt should be lower by that amount, minus the interest yes. cost. Broadly, broadly, yes. Uh, we may decide to go. I mean, we may we may decide to hold a little more cotton uh, basis. You know uh, how how the future is looking. Uh, upside risk is higher than downside risk. So all of those things we will we will consider. So on working capital side, things may 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 not be so mathematical, but on long term debt, you are right. Okay, how much is the long term debt right now? It's uh, 433 crore so far uh, in Q3, and maybe we are expecting to close around 400. Great. Thank you for answering all my questions. That's it from my side. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kostu Pawaskar from Sher Khan by BNP Pariba. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Just taking forward the, uh, the red sheet. Uh, I request uh, you to use your handset, please. Yeah, just a second. Hello. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I just want to continue with the uh, RHC uh, issue question. So you just mentioned that uh, the uh, there won't be any significant uh, delay in shipments or uh, impact on the uh, uh, you know uh, shipment as such. But uh, because of the increase in the freight cost or uh, you know shipment cost, will it have any impact on the margins in the quarters ahead? Uh, because we have uh, we have we have been hearing from some of the companies that uh, there might be some impact on the margins, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the quarters ahead. So I think there could be some indirect impacts because you know the overall increase in the supply chain cost, whether it is borne by us or the customer, uh, it will have a it will have an indirect effect for us. The uh, uh, sort of good news. In a way, is that you know most of our most of the freight is on the account of the customer. Only few accounts, as I mentioned earlier, are DDP, where the responsibility of freight and thereby long-term lock-in of freight prices is something that uh, uh, we do for very small quantity of our business. Uh, so on that small quantity, you are right; it might impact margins based on our ability to negotiate. Because you know this 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 uh, issue is not just for us; the whole world is suffering from it. So to that extent, you know, uh, uh, some of this could be passed on. Um, but overall, yes, you are right that generally in the world this will create a negative headwind. Uh, but because our contracts are mostly FOB and very small part of the business is uh, freight on our responsibility, um, it should not have a huge impact. And uh, uh, another question I just want to ask that if this kind of situation continues uh, for a, a while, will it have an impact on the business cycle? Because last time when uh, there were delay in shipment, uh, there was the inventory piled up with uh, retailers globally because uh, they missed the cycle and the scenario uh, was like they, they were focusing on reducing the inventory and then were uh, trying to build up uh, you know on the stock. So whether such kind of scenario... The short answer is no, and I'll tell you why. Because I think if you look at that inventory build-up scenario, it happened because of many things. One, first, the markets were ex extremely buoyant. So the so all the buyers expected the sales to be much higher, and then there was you know a geopolitical event in the world that then sort of torpedoed the sales. So based on past expectations, in our industry, people buy in advance. Uh, so that was actually the main cause of inventory pileup. The second cause of inventory pileup was not so much uh, higher rates of shipment or higher lead times. It was uncertainty of getting the freight. Um, uh, and it was, uh, you know, you, you couldn't predict the times uh, just because of, you know, COVID disruptions at ports, pileup of con uh, ships at ports and unable to clear uh, unavailability of lines uh, that was not predictable so that's why people bought uh, more, uh, way in advance of uh, their need 
here the shipping times are very predictably increased i mean now instead of going through suez they are going through the horn of africa so you know what that uh, what that extra time is so that can get very easily accounted for in the planning cycle vis-a-vis -vis what was happening at the uh, previous instance which was high unpredictability that is not there right now so i would be very surprised if this leads to a uh inventory pile up and i think people have become very very conservative after that negative experience so now you know in fact we get a lot of requests to for chase orders that were not planned and you know uh, people are people are erring on the side of caution rather than being aggressive right now right so thanks thanks uh, thanks for the understanding and it was very clear about it uh, just last one on uh, the demand environment how it is uh, shaping up both in domestic as well as the uh, international market very slow um improvement uh, that's how i would like to describe the market scenario um, the improvement that we've been guiding as is is there um, however you know the overall gloom due to you know the world not being in a very healthy geopolitical situation was happening all over um, that that doesn't lead our industry to be very uh, you know encouraged generally so um, so the atmosphere is cautious um, us is doing us had a decent holiday season um, uh, uk and europe had better than expected numbers so and inventory is seem to be clear so this is very good news considering the overall situation the globe is in so we should see this gradual you know inch upwards uh, all else being equal and no other major negative news coming in the world thank you thank you thanks for the understanding and all the best for future quarters thank you our next question is from the line of monish gorke from hdfc amc please go ahead uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, so what kind of uh, uh, payback period and return ratios we target when we plan our capex so generally our capex is are planned at a potential of achieving and crossing 20% return on capital employed um, and generally you know it takes 3 years to 4 years for you know that 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 level of return to start coming from from an investment so on incremental basis like whatever capex we are doing so we should uh, get a 20% roc you know maybe 2 3 years down the line right yes 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 okay okay thank you thank you Our next question is from the line of Bajrang Bafna from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, uh, congratulations uh, for a decent set of numbers despite, uh, you know, not very encouraging environment in domestic as well as global market. So my question is little strategic because if we try to understand the global scenario right now, we have one side bangladesh which is a dominant player in government side and lot of uh, wages issues which are occurring in that country right now and there have been media articles uh, you know which are talking about the wages have gone up by 2x they are demanding 3x so if you could just enlighten us what exactly is your take since uh, you know you are tracking uh, you know that particular area very closely so what is your sense and second uh, is we are also simultaneously seeing couple of ftas which have been signed uh, you know before uk to couple of eu countries and 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 more signs are pretty encouraging that more ftas are going to be signed so one side bangladesh is getting little on competitive uh, when it comes to uh, governing vis-a-vis -vis india and second is the opening up of uh, those ftas with the eu market so if you could just guide us your sense on strategic side how uh, you know that particular thing is going to impact arvind uh, per se will be really uh, appreciated so you are right in in your observation so i think middle east and australia ftas have been encouraging and our our business in those regions is 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 uh, is increasing as we speak um i think the bigger markets which are us and europe still uh, bangladesh despite their wage increase will always have an advantage because 10 15 10 to 12% advantage 
uh, is a massive advantage. Um, however, um, you know, for markets where duty-free access is not there, um, uh, India and Bangladesh are fairly now. Um, I mean, we can be compete. We can compete with Bangladesh. So there is no huge advantage to being in Bangladesh. The advantage of Bangladesh is the established ecosystem. So their entire textile value chain is geared towards garmenting, whereas ours has been historically geared towards yarn and then fabric. Uh, and we are in the process of building the garmenting ecosystem. Um, when you look at that in the medium term, today Bangladesh and to a similar extent now Vietnam, both areas that have benefited a lot from uh, the decoupling of from China uh, are already at very high levels of um, uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call um, uh, saturation. So buyers are looking for an option to these countries because nobody wants all their eggs in one basket. And the challenge they face is they don't find enough baskets to put their eggs in. So India has the you know, opportunity to become that big basket because we have the entire supply chain, we have massive labor force, and most importantly, we have a very vibrant domestic market also. So from all those counts, if we can create the right kind of uh, um, garmenting backbone uh, going forward, strategically, India is in a great place, and it doesn't need to, like Bangladesh or Vietnam, depend on exports. We have a great domestic market and many product categories today are being imported from Bangladesh, from even still China, from the Southeast Asian countries, especially in MMF. Uh, and all that opportunity is there for India to build supply chain internally for. Okay, I got it. So any inquiry level increase that we are seeing in last, let's say, uh, two, three months from a uh, couple of MNC side, you know, coming to our country and especially to our company? So, so I think the conversation since this uh, U.S.-China conflict and generally, you know, uh, decoupling from China, the forced labor issues in cotton, since all of that started, global brands have, for the last three, four years, been exploring India as an alternative de destination. India has already benefited. That benefit could have been much higher had we, you know, a very strong garmenting uh, sort of uh, infrastructure, uh, but now it's being built. So so to the extent that we can build it, there are orders already. And that is why, you know, so, you know, in the long term, I expect more and more to come to India as we keep building the, uh, you know, uh, uh, capacities. But quarter on quarter, the the overall global demand picture will also moderate it or accelerate it based on, uh, you know, what the scenario is. Right now, we've come from a very, very soft demand situation to an improving demand situation. But the strategic conversations have started long time ago, and the world is waiting for us to, to actually, you know, sort of build the infrastructure to the extent that they want. Got it. And so just on the Red Sea issue, uh, you know, uh, how have been the January month? Because, you know, a lot of companies are citing that the lead time has increased. I know you have already answered it, but just, you know, to time get definitely have increased. Um, and our customers have to factor in those lead times. Um, mm -hmm. And most of them take the responsibility of the sea freight. And so they have already factored in all of that, hopefully. So, but, you know, the situation is dynamic. I mean, if the situation escalates or worsens, um, it, it may have uh, further unforeseen impacts, but I think impact of what has already happened has been, been factored in. And there is a higher lead time uh, of sailing because now people are going, majority of the customers are choosing to go uh, up around Africa rather than through the Suez. Okay, so our shipments are more or less in line in January month. That means, you know, after broadly the yes. in March. Okay. Broadly, yes. Got it. Thank you very much, yeah, and all the very best. Cascading effect, but by March that should that should get uh, sort of factored. Got it. Thank you, and all the very best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Iqbal Khan. 
from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, firstly, good set of numbers. Uh, sir, one question I have. May I ask you yes. your hand, sir? Please, your audio is muffled, sir. Am I, am I audible now? No, sir. It's still muffled, sir. Uh, just one second. I'll just... Uh, yeah, uh, I have it better now. Better. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my question is pertaining to the margins. Uh, I know you've already answered, but I just wanted to have uh, some more sense on this. So, could you please elaborate when you say uh, your margin improvement was because uh, uh, because of better customer mix and uh, higher efficiency? So could you please elaborate more on that? And secondly, uh, if you can guide us uh, in your textile segment, uh, you know, out of the three division, woven denim or the uh, the garment, which one uh, you know is kind of a high margin product for you? Uh, so basically, the margin mix uh, amongst the uh, textile division. Uh, second question uh, I had was about uh, how the January month is going on, but we have already answered that. Uh, so if you can just address uh, my query on this margin front and how sustainable it is uh, going ahead. So margins improve because your operating efficiency is improved, right? So if mm. if you are able to get more production for the same labor pool or if you are able to get better throughputs on your machinery or if you are able to negotiate your cost down better than your competition or better than you've been able to in the past um, you know your margins will 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 expand and so that's what i mean uh, all okay. all the efforts so you know the last couple of years we've been Sort of our first before uh, you know our first point of call was to make the balance sheet safe, uh, where we we've, we've been very conservative. We focused on reducing debt. Now we've started investing in the business, and our first sort of order of investment is in two things: one, increasing garment capacity; two, improving EMD; and three, making investments to get better efficiency, better margin, more differentiation, uh, all of that. So. Now that capital has been is being allocated for these three things, um, it is an outcome of that that we are seeing AMD grow fast. We are we are seeing garment uh, capacity is being created and we are seeing better margins. Understood. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and one congratulations for uh, the good health numbers. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nilesh Jetani from. Bank of India Mutual Funds, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on the AMD side. So, wanted to understand your aspiration to grow this piece at 20%. Uh, so, what gives you confidence of growing this business at 20% A? And with the current level of capacity, uh, what kind of utilizations are we today? And what is the optimal utilization which can be achieved and thereafter what can be the margins which can be assumed uh, in the best case or optimum uh, capacity utilization scenario? So I'll ad answer it backwards. So in terms of margins, we should continue this kind of uh, trajectory on margin. The reason why the margins are not going to increase dramatically more uh, is because, you know, with scale, we are uh, we the, the margin on the existing business may may expand but we are adding newer capacities as we speak right to to be able to reach that 20 percent so it takes some time for the newer capacity to deliver the same efficiency same same profitability so there will always be you know mature part of the portfolio and there will always be an emerging part of the portfolio and that's why the margins should remain similar uh, but the growth should keep coming And okay, in and terms of capacity utilization, you can say, uh, you know, the the uh, we are at high utilizations across the board, except in industrial where the demand has been been soft. But we are also creating the capacities, you know, quarter on quarter basis. So you know that to allow for that uh, uh, growth and have confidence that uh, you know that that type of growth is possible. As far as demand is concerned, each of these segments have a very large global potential. So we are nowhere close to, you know, achieving saturation in terms of that demand. I think uh, it's more a, a customer acquisition capability and a capacity creation capability that we have to uh, sort of uh, do uh, and which we are doing. Mm -hmm. 
and with the current set of customers and current order book uh, however you defined it we wanted to understand for the next 2 to 3 years 2 to 3 years we are confident of driving a 20% kind of a growth yes that is that will be our endeavor uh, of course as you get further out the clarity is less but uh, you know looking at next year that is our internal plan that is being worked out is to be able to achieve that kind of a number got it uh so i understand the human protection piece of the business uh, but on the industrial and the other side can you just give me few examples what are the key products or what to do on that area uh, sorry that question is uh, very basic in nature but would like to have a small understanding on that sure like we arrange for most of our investors we'd be very happy to even arrange plant visit where you can see product etc uh, uh, whoever wants can of course contact satya and uh, And, and and arrange it um just to give you a brief snapshot um in industrial we focus mainly broadly i mean it's it's more detailed than this but broadly on filtration products air air filtration liquid filtration and conveyor belting um and on composite side we 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 focus on glass and carbon uh substrates uh, which are for structure and then we have forward integrated into making parts where you impregnate resins into uh these glass and carbon fabrics to make different types of end products one is sports where we make rackets out of carbon fiber for badminton and tennis then you have uh, mass transportation where we make uh, panels uh driver cabins toilets for indian railways for uh, metros uh then we make the fabric that goes into windmill blades then we make various industrial and structural products out of uh, this composite material so broad canvas in composites catalyzed by the ability to weave and knit glass and carbon uh fiber got it that was really helpful uh my third question would be on the textile piece uh so what broad understanding i have is that last year because of this China plus one and Bangladesh under some problem. A lot of Indian companies got that advantage where even the export, the volumes were largely flat, so on an international level. But a lot of Indian companies would have gained market share, and that led to that higher delta in the top line. So I wanted to understand whether this delta will continue for Indian players and especially for players like Arvind going forward, or that has already played out. Now it would be a gradual growth. Or what? What is your sense on that? no oh, no so china is such a large part of the overall international uh you know uh, part, uh, export business that you know the decoupling has just begun you could say and a lot more volume should come to people who are able to cater to that kind of demand so i think as i mentioned earlier in the challenge in india is to be able to build the capacity uh, especially on garments we are very good on fabric and yarn Uh, we are already dominant in the world there so our challenge is to build garment capacity both for domestic and export customers as long as we do that there is still plenty of opportunity and people will want to come to india because other garmenting destinations are getting saturated so i don't think that this is over i think the opportunity for people in india see a lot of brands are also coming to india so everybody will want india for india manufacturing that trend will continue way into the future um, and for export also i think if we if we get our labor productivity right if we get the automation right if we get the capacity build up uh, correct uh, if we are able to you know sort of uh, have best in class delivery and uh, and quality uh like like china used to have um we should be able to do a lot more business and we need to constantly innovate why china over the years despite having almost twice the uh wages and pretty much higher cost on all you know sort of parameters be it utilities be it chemical be it power be it steam uh is still having such a dominant position in the world it's because they've kept innovating on the on the product and i think with the government's push to to promote mmf because most of the world is pivoting on cotton india is a leader but on mmf where the innovation quotient is much higher 
um, we are just beginning that journey. So as we go through that journey and as we achieve a high level of innovation on MMF, uh, I think uh, we should be able to continue this journey that is not dependent on, you know, another country losing out, but us charting our own way. So I think the future of textiles in India is bright because we started that journey. Um, the government has, uh, is doing everything to, to support that journey. We have a very strong domestic market. We already have the yarn. You know, even MMF yarn is very strong in India. Now in MMF, we need to develop the fabric and the garmenting. In cotton, we need to develop the garmenting. So as long as we do that well, uh, I don't see, you know, uh, the India journey being disrupted. Got it. And one last question. Uh, the trajectory of this 400 crore capex, uh, it would be completed by when and any plan for next set of capex? We said about 600 crores across two years and I think we should achieve that. Okay. And lastly, can we assume 1x uh, turnover for the textile piece and... It should be, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you know, textile should be one, uh, garment should be two and a half, three and AMD should be three plus. And the breakup of 600 would be? You can broadly say one third, one third, one third. Okay, got it. That was really helpful and... That, that, that will happen at the last moment. Got it, got it. That was really helpful and thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Biplav de Burma from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so my first question is, uh, since the uh, 4Q FI24 uh, looks very uh, optimistic, uh, so F, uh, the revenue and EBITDA in FI24, uh, should we surpass what we did in FI23? I think so. Um, I think that let me, is... Let me, let, me take the, let me take the question. So, you know, FY23 was a very <coughs> different kind of scenario where quarter one was extremely strong. Or in fact, the uh, first half of the year was very strong. And then, uh, you know, markets started to slide down and our profitability also started to go down. So, if you look at it, FY23 versus 24, they may be more or less flat. But when you look at the run rate, as to much sharper, much higher as compared to uh, the first half of this year or the second half of the next last year. Okay. Okay. My my second question is on uh, again on Garmin, sir. I I I completely we completely understand that. You know, long-term prospects for the garment segment is very, very good for India and for the EU and many other uh, garment companies. Uh, but just trying to understand what is making you so positive in the near term that despite having uh, capacity, we are uh, uh, ex uh, doing capex in garment and in terms of priority also, garment capex is uh, over, uh, the answer is that our conversation with our customers. So we have a lot of customers on fabric. They want us to do more garments. So it is being driven by customer conversations uh, and their intent to buy from us. So uh, by when we should see some uh, impact on the volume, uh, I mean, uh, descent impact on volume, say, uh, now you're doing seven, seven and a half half uh, 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 million pieces, if I'm not mistaken, around that number, a seven and a half kind of thing. And uh, uh, from there, say, in, uh, per quarter, eight, nine uh, million pieces. Can you expect very it? Soon. In, very soon. Very I soon. I think that, that visibility is already there. That's it. You give, saying that uh, software demand uh, uh, environment, uh, you are saying that you believe that kind of volume could be achievable in, they say, one or two quarters, maybe. We, we believe that one or two quarters is the right timeline to achieve uh, those kind of uh, volumes. Um, of course, there, you know, short-term events keep happening where 
you know it gets delayed by one quarter or two quarters but maximum that you know the the journey and the conversations are very interesting to where we are confident that in that one two quarter kind of uh, timeline we should see the kind of volume you are talking about okay that that's very 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 good news and my final question is sir you mentioned about defense uh, you know uh, business from defense segment uh, and you I, if i am not mistaken you are doing something in in vande bharat also uh, so uh, from uh, government run uh, enterprises or government agency uh, in absolute terms uh, would it be more than 200 300 crore kind of business you are doing right now or uh, it is much higher sure uh, i think uh, it should be around that i mean i'll have to cross check and we can we can send you the exact ballpark. details but uh, yeah, yes there is good amount of psu volume also not just in uh, uh, you know composites and human protection but also in in industrial where we do filtration business especially our air pollution control etc we would be supplying to uh, steel authority of india and other government psus okay sir thank you thank and you all the best thank you ladies and gentlemen the last question for today's question and answer session is from the line of pulki singhal from dalmas capital management please go ahead thank you for the opportunity my question is uh, continuing on that uh, understanding the garmenting shift of manufacturing can you talk about uh, what are some of those uh, anecdotes that you are seeing in terms of uh, saturation in bangladesh and vietnam that is giving you some confidence about shift towards india that is one and secondly when you talk about scaling up of garmenting in india i think most garment manufacturers would be having 20 25% of capacity i mean i i, I don't understand uh, why scaling up would be an issue when if there is demand i'm sure existing guys would be happy to scale up but you are making it sound it's more about capacity so oh, i think uh, uh good questions i think the first question is that you know see the way way uh, you know uh, a customer buys is like somebody like in any field people try and uh, mitigate risk so generally they have a risk mitigated strategy for buying where they create you know regional sort of uh, targets to uh, to to sort of their sourcing strategy so if they will have a bangladesh uh, a target they will have a uh, you know turkey near shore target for europe they will have a central america target they will have an india target they will have a china target uh, broadly you know customers will have you know that kind of a portfolio of their their buy plan allocated broken up into this kind of portfolio and they will not want anything to cross 25 30% because if there is any disruption in the world a large part of their supply chain then gets disrupted and then the the the, the goods don't reach the shelves one must understand that uh, the sort of order to shelf cycles in our industry can be as long as 6 months so these these decisions have to be made well in advance and then once that decision is made and somewhere in that 6 months if some major disruption happens you can be in big trouble if you are over dependent on any region so clearly in our conversations with our buyers people want to index more on india the frustration that the buyers have is that we've been very slow in creating garment capacity now coming to your second question on why we've been slow and why if there is demand it cannot be done quickly garmenting is a very labor intensive process today it is a very execution focused business it's a complicated supply chain management strategy where you know little buttons labels from 50 different places trims would be coming fabric would be coming so that and and generally lead times etc are, are are very tight uh, so the so you have to get your supply chain uh, management strategy um, uh, very very um uh, accurate and given that the world has now reached you know very very high levels of service and accuracy and quality anybody starting out on this journey it's a challenge to it's an execution challenge um it's a labor management challenge labor in india uh, has huge opportunities 
uh, across various industries unlike you know bangladesh and many other geographies which are very dependent on textiles we have, our labor force has opportunities galore so you know in india you have uh, absenteeism attrition and only now uh, you know the 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 technology is now pivoting to where automation high output high throughput less labor intensity all that is becoming possible in garmenting which is encouraging news for country like india uh, but still it is a supply chain challenge so um, that is why very few players have created very large disproportionate value in india and even globally it's not as if you know there are uh, very strong large names there would be you know maybe two sets of hands you can count the uh, the big and 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 highly profitable companies in in garmenting so garmenting is a is a challenging business and so it's not not like you know you put a spinning plant get one good spinner and you know you can start generating top quality spinning from you know yarn from day one garmenting is a little more effort than that that's why it takes time and 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 uh, you know you need to you need to have good amount of supply chain management skill uh, to make money in this competitive market like so in terms of the customer conversations i mean i was now versus say 2 years ago before the whole inventory correction started are there clear conversations where they're saying hey listen we are happy to give you say 50 million dollars or 70 million dollars of government things orders if you set up the capacities uh, for it i mean yes, are there yes. any so the advantage of I, Arvind, is that we are we are we are pitching our verticality along with innovation and sustainability. Very few people in the industry have that combination. So, if we have the garmenting sort of capacity is created, and if we are hitting the operational and quality norms that the customers require, they would have been very happy to buy from us a couple of years ago. We were very conservative in our garment journey because one, we didn't want to. We have very high stakes with the same customers on fabric. It's now that we've sort of created this one Arvind team where all textile business is under one leadership, one very capable leadership, where the internal alignment between fabric and garment is is perfect. Uh, rewind 2 years we were a side you know organization that had a garmenting division that had a denim division that had a woven division and each would operate as sort of their own uh, little company within the umbrella of arvin independently sort of dealing with customers now all of that has been aligned under one leadership uh, and the success the initial success of that move is giving us ample confidence and the initial success at sort of improving substantially the operating metrics of our existing garment business is giving us that confidence along with the customer saying hey if you create the capacity we'll be we happy to buy from you that's been a constant for many years actually we have not uh, sort of put that front foot forward because one first we were correcting the balance sheet then we did this one arvin positioning now the one arvin positioning is is uh, is is firing well and that's giving both the customers and us um you know the confidence on on increasing capacity and 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 verticalizing more aggressive great thank you and all the best thank you ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of our question and answer session i now hand the conference over to mr satya prakash for closing comments Thank you everyone once again for taking your time out for part participating in the conference call for Arvind looking forward to meeting you in the upcoming conferences i and my team are available just a phone call or a email away and uh, thank you and uh, have a good day thank you on behalf of arvind limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines